Hi, Bill from Polygon here. In this video, you'll learn how to use the upholstery generator to create the perfect fabric for your scenes. I'll give a brief overview of the different settings and show you how to export the final material for your 3D software. All the settings I'm gonna show you will be the same regardless of where you're using it. You can open it in a Substance plugin if you're using 3ds Max, Maya, or any of the other applications that support the latest Substance plugin. If you're using software that doesn't have a plugin like Blender, you can just use the generator in Substance Player, which is where I'm going to be demonstrating it. It's also worth noting that Substance Player is a free download, um, and I'll be sure to include a link to it and the relevant add-ons in the description below. Okay, so the first category of settings we have here are some general settings, uh, most importantly the resolution of the final textures. Now by default this is set to 512, and this is so the viewport updates nice and fast while you're making alterations. We'll increase this number to 4K when it's time to export, but for now I'm going to set it to 1024 as that still runs pretty nicely on my particular hardware setup. There is also a random seed value here which will basically create a completely different version of the current material based on the settings below. Next we have global parameters. From here we can choose our workflow, either metallic roughness or specular glossy. Now this is an important one to get right and it will depend on the application you're using. In Blender for example it's best to go with the metallic roughness workflow uh, as that is what the principal shader works best with. However let's say you're using the Corona renderer, you'd be better off using the specular glossy workflow. In case you're uncertain, the easiest way to tell is to look at the map types that your shader needs. A uh, specular workflow will typically give you a set of color, specular, gloss, and normal textures, uh, whereas a metalness workflow will give you a set of diffuse, metalness, roughness, and normal ones. After that, we have the target material scale. By default, this is set up to cover an area of 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. You can use this to get a good approximation of the scaling you'll want to use when applying the material to your model. Then we have weave type, where you can choose from a variety of different types of fabric weave. There are a lot to choose from, and it will obviously have a huge impact on the look of your final material. Now, depending on your selection, different options will be available below to allow you to customize your selection. For example, uh, in the case of basket weave, you can adjust the horizontal and vertical weave variants. Whereas in twill, you can select the twill type, choosing between standard, zigzag, and herringbone. I won't go over every single combination of option here, but it's worth spending a bit of time to explore all the different options on offer. Before moving on from weave type, I want to quickly mention the custom weave input. This allows you to import a black and white mask to create a custom weave type where the black areas of the mask will be the horizontal strands and the white will be the vertical. You can create an almost limitless number of weave patterns using this feature. I'll include a link to a written article on the subject in the description below that covers the feature in more detail. For now though, let's set the weave type back to plain uh, and move on. The next category we have to explore is threads. Uh, here you can customize the look of the threads um, that make up the weave pattern that you've selected. Let's start by changing the color of our weave. I'll use navy blue and muted blue. It's worth noting that while there are quite a few presets to choose from, you can also select custom and manually change the color to anything you wish. Now we have our color selected, let's explore some more of these options. We can adjust the thickness of the threads, the ratio between the horizontal and vertical thickness. We can add some variation to the diameter for a less uh, machined look. Um, and we can further that effect by adding in some thread distortion and adjusting the uniform spacing value. Before moving on, I'm gonna reset a couple of these values though. Um, so we have a nice plain looking weave again. And now it's time to move on to the pattern. Disabled by default, the pattern allows us to create some truly unique fabrics. Now, much like the weave settings, you will get a different set of variables depending on what pattern type you select. And there are too many combinations to, to cover completely, uh, but let me show you a few now. The default category is stripes. Uh, now let's select a pattern type of gradual stripes. Turn on symmetry, uh, this will mirror the pattern. Uh, and then let's up the stripe count. We can pick the color. Um, I'll go with this sort of medium orange. And then we'll rotate the pattern by 90 degrees. There, quite a cool looking pattern. Now if I change the pattern type to squares, you'll notice it's remembered the color selection, but the other values have now changed. Same again if I cycle through a few of the other types. Notice that each category has a few selections in it, and that each selection will give you different controls to adjust that selection. Like you can for the weave type, you can also select a custom pattern and use a mask to power that. Uh, this will also be covered in the article I mentioned earlier. 
Jumping back to my original stripes pattern for now, you'll see we can also adjust the pattern application method between dyed threads or screen printing, the latter giving a very different look to uh, traditional dyeing. We can also choose to apply the pattern uh, to either the vertical or the horizontal threads, or both. There is also an option of both two patterns. <laughs> um, this gives us a whole extra pattern category to play with to blend two patterns together. The second pattern behaves exactly the same as the one we've just taken a look at. It's just that the first pattern will be applied to the horizontal threads and the second will be applied to the vertical. Okay, for now I'm going to turn my pattern off so we can better see the effects of the next category, um, which is aging. Here we can add imperfections to our material, the first being dye fading, where the colour of the material has started to fade over time. We can adjust the amount of stray fibres that are created. To see this more clearly, let me jump over to 2D view for a moment and increase our output resolution to 4K. Stray fibres are an essential part of realism when it comes to fabrics, and that's why this feature is enabled by default. Okay, pulled threads adds in a nice effect where over time individual threads have been pulled out a little. Uh, you may need to up the lightness level to see this, um, yeah, but that will depend on the, the colour and the pattern selections you've made previously. We can also add in dirt and wrinkles, both of which can be configured in terms of scaling and intensity to get the sort of weathered look that it is you're looking for. Below that we have our normal adjustment category, uh, which is the same as in our previous generators, where you can make some final adjustments to the maps. More importantly, uh, it's here that you select your normal format, which I'll cover in a moment. Now I'm going to quickly cover exporting so you can take your finished material and generate a PBR texture set to use in other applications. If you're using a plugin directly in your application rather than Substance Player, you can ignore this part. Now here in these shading settings, we can adjust the normal format. Depending on your render engine and software, you may want to adjust these. I, for example, use Blender uh, for most of my projects, and for that you'd want to use OpenGL. So I'm going to set that now. Right, before we open the export window, we need to head right back up to the top of our settings panel and set the resolution to what we want for our final exported textures. Um, let's select 4K, and then head over and click on the Export as Bitmap button. As you can see, this opens up a new window, and from here we can set up our export. By default, all of the various texture types are available, uh, but I'm going to disable a few and just export the base colour, roughness, normal and height textures, as they tend to work great in Blender as is. Next, let's head up to the file type. I tend to go with .tiff files here um, for the extra colour depth, and then the only thing left to do is set the export folder, where you want the, the files to end up. Once everything is set up, simply hit export and your textures will be saved. From there you can simply load them into your target application and you're good to go.